Chapter 14. Locks. I went straight to room 301 on the third floor. Now I was glad I had gone on that little tour because I knew exactly where to go and didn't have to look up once. I noticed that some kids were definitely staring at me now. I did my thing of pretending not to notice. I went inside the classroom and the teacher was writing on the chalkboard while all the other kids started sitting at different desks. The desks were in a half circle facing the chalkboard, so I chose the desk in the middle toward the back, which I thought would make it harder for anyone to stare at me. I still kept my head way down, just looking up enough to, from under my bangs to see everyone's feet. As the desk started to fill up, I did notice that no one sat down next to me. A couple of times, someone was about to sit next to me and then changed his or her mind at the last minute and sat somewhere else. Hey, August. It was Charlotte giving me her little wave as she sat down at the desk in front of the class. Why anyone would ever choose to sit up front in a class, I don't know. Hey, I said, nodding hello. Then I noticed Julian was sitting a few sits away from her, talking to some other kids. I know he had saw me, but he didn't say hello. Suddenly, someone was sitting down next to me. It was Jack Will. Jack. What's up? He said, nodding at me. Hey, Jack. I answered, waving my hand, which I immediately wished I hadn't done because it felt kind of uncool. Okay, kids. Okay, everybody. Settle down, said the teacher now facing us. She had written her name, Miss Potosa, on the chalkboard. Everybody find a seat, please. Come in, she said to a couple of kids who had just walked in the room. There's a seat there and one right there. She hadn't noticed me yet. Now, the first thing I want everyone to do is stop talking and... She noticed me. Put your backpacks down and quiet down. She had only hesitated for a millionth of a second, but I could tell the moment that she saw me. Like I said, I'm used to it by now. I'm going to take attendance and do the seating chart, she continued, sitting at the edge of her desk. Next to her were three, ro three neat rows of accordion folders. When I call your name, come up and I'll hand you a folder with your name on it. It contains your class schedule and your combination lock, which you should now try to open until I tell you. You not try to open until I tell you. Your locker number is written on the class schedule. Be forewarned that some lockers are not right outside this class, but down the hall. And before anyone even thinks of asking, no, you cannot switch lockers, and you cannot switch locks. Then, if there's time at the end of this period, we're all going to get to know each other a little better, okay? Okay. She picked up the clipboard on her desk and started reading out the names out loud. Okay, so Julian Albans, she said, looking up. Julian raised his hand and said, here, at the same time. Hi, Julian, she said, making a note on her seating chart. She picked up the very first folder and held it out towards him. Come pick it up, she said, kind of, no nonsense. He got up and took it from her. Zeminia Chin. She handed a folder to each kid as she read off the names. As she went down the list, I noticed that the seat next to me was the only one empty, even though there were two kids sitting at one desk just a few seats away. When she called the name of one of them, a big kid named Henry Joplin, who already looked like a teenager, said, she said, Henry, there's an empty seat right over there. Why don't you take that seat, okay? She handed him his folder and pointed to the desk right next to mine. Although I didn't look at him directly, I could tell Henry did not want to move next to me, just by the way he dragged his backpack on the floor as he came over, like he was moving in slow motion. Then he plopped his backpack up really high on the right side of the desk, so it was kind of like a wall between his desk and mine. Maya Markowitz. Miss Potosa was saying now. Here, a girl about four desks down from me. Miles Nury. Here, said the kid that had been sitting with Henry Joplin as he walked back to his desk. I saw him shoot Henry a poor you look. August Pullman, said Miss Potosa. Here, I said quietly, raising my hand a bit. Hi, August, she said, smiling at me very nicely when I went up to get my folder. I kind of felt everyone's eyes burning into my back for the few seconds that I stood in the front of the class, and everybody looked down when I walked back to my desk. I resisted spinning the combination when I sat down, even though everyone else was doing it, because she had specifically told us not to. I was already pretty good at opening locks anyway, because I've used them on my bike. Henry kept trying to open his lock, but couldn't do it. He was getting frustrated and kind of cursing under his breath. Miss Potosa called out the next few names. The last name was Jack Will. After she handed Jack his folder, she said, Okay, so everybody write your combinations down somewhere safe that you won't forget it, okay? But if you do forget, which happens at least 3.2 times per semester, Mrs. Garcia has a list of all the combination numbers. Now go ahead, take your locks out of your folders, and spend a couple of minutes practicing how to open them. Though I know some of you went ahead and did that anyway. She was looking at Henry when she said that. And in the meantime, I'll tell you guys a little something about myself. And then you guys can tell me a little bit about yourselves, and, well, um, we'll get to know each other. Sound good? Good. She smiled at everyone though I felt she was smiling at me the most. 
It wasn't a shiny smile like Miss Garcia's, but a normal smile, like she meant it. She looked very different from what I thought teachers were going to look like. I guess I thought she'd look like Miss Fowl from Jimmy Neutron, an old lady with a big bun on top of her head. But in fact, she looked exactly like Mon, Mothma, Mon Mothma from Star Wars, Episode 6. Haircut kind of like a boy's and a big white shirt kind of like a tunic. She turned around and started writing on the chalkboard. Henry still couldn't get his lock open, and he was getting more and more frustrated every time someone else popped one open. He got really annoyed when I was able to open mine on the first try. The funny thing is, if he hadn't put the backpack up between us, I most definitely would have offered to help him.